Okay, so this is my first video on my M1 MacBook Air, and uh, it's only right that I've got a load of cables hanging out of it and a Raspberry Pi attached to it. So here's my Pi 4 4 gig, and uh, you can see that it's being powered from a power bank, and I've got it going through. You might have seen other people doing videos on these video capture devices. Now, I've got three or four videos using a much more expensive Ava Media Capture device, and uh, this is super cheap. This was £9, and actually it's got very low input lag for a £9 capture device. So let's start up OBS. I'll switch to a bit of screen capture in a minute. And you can see it looks like this at the moment because my Pi isn't switched on. If I power up my power bank, and you don't need to use a power bank, obviously I could use mains power for the Pi, but I wanted to try it all portable. You can see that my Raspberry Pi starts up, and if I right click I can go to full screen, there you go. So that's now running from the Pi, uh, but basically going HDMI into that capture device with a USB-C adapter, and it's being powered by a power bank. And I've already used this power bank in other videos, and it works really well at powering the Pi. Uh, I've got my Logitech keyboard plugged in, so let's put that in place. And if I pop my keyboard on top, it actually stays pretty well because it's got rubber feet and it's not touching the trackpad. Uh, and it's not touching the keyboard or anything like that. So now I can move my mouse around and just to try and show you how responsive it is, it's actually pretty usable. So let's see how usable it is. Uh, so if I click on the bottom here, uh, you can see I can go to internet and Chromium browser and uh, we'll let that launch. I'm running on Wi-Fi at the moment on my Pi. Uh, so if I just do a search for say BBC, uh, you can see the keyboard comes up pretty well as well. BBC homepage. And if I scroll down and scroll up, you can see that it's pretty much in sync. It really doesn't feel that bad. As I say, I've had other capture devices and you wouldn't have wanted to use it. I think this is usable. If you needed to do something on your Pi, especially with keyboard, because you'd notice it less. So if you're using something like the terminal and, uh, and you're doing something in that, then it's going to be a lot nicer to use anyway. It certainly feels more responsive than a remote desktop. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Now let's switch over to screen capture. So if I go to file and new screen recording, I haven't tried this on this yet. Yeah, that looks like it's recording. So I'm switching over to screen capture now. Uh, let's go back into OBS and I'll go back to full screen. Full screen display and I'm going back to my Logitech keyboard and moving around just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, I mean, it, it is a bit soft because I think it's running at 720, but you can see I'm moving around and not having any issue in switching between any of these. So if I wanted to launch Raspberry Pi Imager, you can see that that comes up all right. And if I choose OS and if I scroll down and scroll up, so if I wanted to do arrays, choose SD card, there's no SD card in there, uh, or no secondary SD card to choose. But this also as I said before, works with pretty much anything that you plug into the HDMI slot. So I've already plugged my iPhone in there and it works fine. Uh, let's try and get uh, some images up on here or something like YouTube. Let's get some video playing. So YouTube. It does, it does feel all right, surprisingly enough, uh, considering it's going through a very cheap £9 capture device. Uh, oh, and if I switch over, you can see here that's the device I'm using, so I'll put a link in the description if you wanted to order one yourself. And the only other thing I've done is installed the OBS software, uh, and that's all it needs. So let's go back into full screen. There you go, and now I'm solely on the Pi, uh, so no thanks to that and agree, and let's do the PSP video and HDR, because this is one of my sort of high quality video test samples. And let's get it running. This Pi is overclocked to 2147, uh, so that's not 720 at the moment. Let's up that, oh it is 720. So it's, it's, it's cleaned itself up a bit. You can see a tiny bit of screen tearing there, uh, it's sorting itself out, but it's, uh, yeah, so video performance isn't as good. That's weird that it's doing that because I didn't notice that on anything else. So you don't notice it on the desktop. 
So as a desktop, uh, it certainly seems fine. Uh, from a video performance point of view, it does seem to be a bit ragged, uh, so you wouldn't necessarily use it for that. But uh, certainly if you're using it for a desktop and to run apps and things like that, uh, it seems to be perfectly adequate, especially for the low price. And again, this will work with uh, quite a lot of uh, even low-end Windows laptops. Uh, I'll be trying it on my old 2010 Mac uh, to see how well it works on that, because obviously this is a very powerful device. Um, but uh, yeah, super impressed. Anyway, I hope this all helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.